Get up to rock, get up to burn, stand with the pride and burn for your desire. Welcome to week number three here in the Mid-Atlantic Mauling League's Spike Magazine Trophy. And boy, there's a there's a lot of block on the pitch tonight. Tonight, we're going to have the Dinnerbell Darlings versus the Mighty Tidy Whiteys. Doug the Minotaur versus Artificial Bunny. Dwarves versus Norse. Let's take a look at the standings before we take a look at the rosters. Over in Division A, Clypheus, the current league champion. He is coaching the Knights of Nuffle. With their win this week, they advance into first place with a record of two, one, and zero. Close behind them are the Damaged Dragons, coached by War Horseman, has yet to play his game this week. That's a Lizard team. 2-0-0 is his record. Berserker Tempest in third place with his win this week. He is coaching a Skaven team. 1-2-0 is the record. And in fourth place, hey, that's my team, the Dead Presidents of Undead Team. 1-1-0 in Division A. Over in Division B, the Double Dippers currently in first place, 2-0-0, a Necro team coached by Sweet Bunny. Doug the Minotaur is up tonight. The Dinnerbell Darlings, they have a record of 2-0-0. They have only lost a single game all season long, and that was in the Chaos Cup Championship. In third place, the Arendelle Icebreakers, a Norse team. They're in third place, 1-1-0, but tonight it's going to be the Mighty Tidy Whiteys, another Norse team coached by Artificial Bunny. 0-0-2, they're looking for their first win in this competition. They're new to the season, so they're new to the Spike Magazine Trophy. That means they uh, are a fresh team. They're coming in at a TV of 1,000. Uh, that's going to play uh, a big part <laughs> <laughs> tonight's matchup. First off, let's take a look at the home team. The art uh, the artificial bunnies. <laughs> the dinner bell darlings. <laughs> They're coming in a TV of 1500 into this competition. A 12 man roster. They have Kevin Bacon, the level four runner, soon to be level five. Uh oh, he's got to strike the four. He has block. He has tackle tackle. Not going to be a big consideration in tonight's matchup. Guac Holiday, the second runner here, he's a level three. He's picked up block and dodge, a blodger, a blodger. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it at all. Gravy Crockett Jr. He is uh, filling in the shoes of his uh, late father. He is the new troll slayer on this roster. That's a frenzy player with Dauntless. Two blitzers on the roster. General Custer, General So. General Custer has Mighty Blow. Both of them have a uh, guard and look at all this guard. Look at all this guard on the roster. Doug the Minotaur has done a very good job here of spreading out his SPP, getting guard ASAP as you do with dwarves. All these long beards, they all come with uh, block, of course, and all but one of them has the guard skill. This is absolutely terrifying. Three team rerolls, one oppo, eight fan factor, and he'll be up against the mighty tidy whiteys. As we, <laughs> as we mentioned earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty Groblin, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. I appreciate it. It's very kind. Thank you. Uh, every time I see this uh, <laughs> this motto, <laughs> boxers live brief lives. TV of 1,000 coming into tonight's game. He's going to be down a player. Long John's out with uh, a broken back. He'll be out this week. Uh, 10 players on the roster. He'll have to pick up a journeyman that'll uh, bring his TV value up to 1050. He's got the Yeti Pants Squatch that has Claw naturally. Claw and Frenzy, the two Ulf winners, they have Frenzy uh, and everybody else has Block. He does have a thrower 
uh, who naturally has the pass skill, and he has uh, a runner who has Dauntless as well. Three TRRs, one Apothecary. How do the two teams play? Oh boy. <laughs> well, <laughs> if we look at Doug the Minotaur's team, right? Standard dwarf, uh, standard dwarf stuff going on here. Standard dwarf tactics. Everybody's got block. He's very, very resilient with an AV of nine and thick skull. He's got guard on just about everybody. Uh, he's gonna want to go base to base all night. He wants to go base to base uh, and just try to smash these opponents. Right? Guard means he's always going to be getting his assists. He will almost always have the leg up. He has Kevin Bacon with the strength of four. Um, on offense, he just needs to open up that hole, and he's in a really good position to do it. Um, he just, because of the low speed of, of the long beards, if he's going to be in a cage, which he'll tend to want to be in, he's only going to move as fast as the slowest player. So he's going to slowly plot up the pitch. But of course, Artificial Bunny has to be careful of these runners with that MA of six. That's uh, deceptively quick. When you think about a Dwarven team, you think Dwarves don't move all that fast. But we saw a two-turn touchdown earlier in the competition with Kevin Bacon. Uh, Artificial Bunny will have to watch out for that, of course. Uh, honestly, <laughs> this Norse team, oh boy, uh, really their their big advantage, right, is is block on everyone and who you don't have block on, you've got Frenzy. He still has the Frenzy advantage. Block's not going to be uh, not going to be working for him tonight, right? Like he's going to be going up against a team full of block as well. Um, whereas the Dwarven team is going to want to go base to base. They're going to want to be in base contact and get all those blocks. The Mighty Tidy Whities are absolutely not going to want to do that. Almost everybody on this roster has an AV of 7. That is not a lot. AV 7 means you have to roll an 8 or higher on a 2d6. There are a whole lot of ways to roll 8 plus uh, compared to, say, 9 plus or 10 plus. So, Artificial Bunny, If uh, I think what we'll see tonight is he'll try to get his blocks, of course. Um, if he doesn't knock down, he'll push away and he will not follow up. I think if he gets the knockdown, uh, depending on who he might end up, you know, if he doesn't end up in base-to-base -base contact, he'll follow up for sure. Um, boy, it's going to be tough for the Artificial Bunny. I think uh, I think this is all going to come down to these inducements, and let's talk about those. He's got 450,000 gold in petty cash coming to him this evening. Um... I mean, he's got his he's got his pick of the litter, right? He's got literally every star player uh, available to, to the Norse team. He can pick up uh, he can pick up the babes, which he might if he thinks he's going to be removed from the pitch. He does have an AV of seven. He could pick up two uh, two babes to bring his KO rolls up to a two plus. It's always an option. A wizard is always an option. Um, honestly, <laughs> with 450. I, <laughs> that's, Berserker Tempest says, a, the chef is a ringing. Yeah, at 450, I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be mad if he picked up a chef. If he picked up a halfling master chef for 300k, uh, you know, he has, you know, on average, he'll get one and a half rerolls, uh, not just for himself, but he'll take that away from his opponent. His opponent has three rerolls and hey, there's a six, there's a one in 64 chance that he takes away all six rerolls from his opponent. I would love to see that, <laughs> but it is very, very costly. He does have an option though. He has uh, Ice Pelt Hammer Blow. That's a strength six uh, star player for 330, 330K he could pick up. That's a strength six player with Claw uh, and Frenzy. And uh, he's a little bit more resilient with the AV of eight. He also has a thick skull. Zara is also an option. We saw Zara earlier in the competition. Zara is a strength four player who's a blodger. She has uh, jump up, stab, and stakes. Stakes will not, uh, of course, not uh, be a factor in tonight's game. He can pick up Helmet, you know, a fan favorite. He can pick up Helmet, who's a loony. That's a secret weapon with the chainsaw. Um, he's got a couple of other options as well. There's a bombardier. He can pick up uh, a, a strength four player with uh, Frenzy and Wrestle. Um, if he doesn't go for the chef, which is a big investment. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he picks up Ice Pelt. Uh, Ice Pelt, I think, is a great pickup. You get that extra strength. You get a little bit of a strength advantage. You got Frenzy with him as well. His big advantage here is that he's got three Frenzy players. He does have to watch out for the Troll Slayer, who has uh, Frenzy as well. But if he can leverage Frenzy to pull these dwarves out of position, remember, they want to stay grouped up. They want to be leveraging that guard if they can. If you can pick them apart, uh, you're going to make them that much weaker. Uh, it's just going to be very, very, very tricky for Artificial Bunny to pull that, pull that off. Uh, I think with this low TV team, uh, 
but I'm here for it. <laughs> I'm here for it. I think Ice Pelt's a good pick. I think Zara's a good pick. Uh, if he wants to go foul heavy, he can pick up a bribe. Maybe he picks up Helmet. Uh, I think that's a good pick. A Chef's a good pick. Uh, and I, you know, who doesn't love seeing a wizard? That'd be a good pick too. Uh, we'll see what our official buddy wants to do uh, with his uh, massive petty cash. But uh, I think the game, or I think strategically, the game's going to be won or lost in the inducement phase. Um, two great coaches, of course. Again, Doug the Minotaur has only lost a single game all season long, and that was in the Chaos Cup final. He is uh, uh, undefeated here in the Spike Magazine Trophy. He's looking to continue that streak here tonight. All right, so we're over on Cabal TV. Let's check Discord to see if the coaches are ready to go. It looks like indeed they are, and it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be quite an inducement phase. I, I really wish we could watch it, but uh, 450 is a lot of money. <laughs> Clefia says Chef was quite the thing for me earlier. Yeah, man, I, if you can eliminate those rerolls, it, it's it's a long shot with the Chef. It costs you a lot of money, and it's a long shot. But if it did happen, that's a big advantage, right? You've just, you've changed the calculations for your opponent for an entire half. So uh, that would certainly be an option for him. Uh, if he praised a Nuffle, maybe he gets all three. We'll see what he picked up though. I don't know. I don't know if our official bunny uh, is the type of coach that would pick up a chef. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bet ice pelts and a wizard. <laughs> that's what I'm gonna bet. That's gonna bring him up to four, seven. <gasps> It's snowing! GFIs fail on a two! What did our official bunny pick up? Two babes is what he picked up. And uh, and he did pick up ice pelts. All right, two babes and ice pelts. Fame advantage naturally went to the darlings. They have a fame plus one. This snowy weather means GFIs are going to fail not just on a one, but on a one or a two. That's going to be um, a lot more harmful to the slow Dwarven team than the Norse team. We'll see if Artificial Bunny can use it to his advantage. Dinnerbell Darling setting up in an anchor formation on defense. The mighty tidy whitey is now on offense. See again, Ice Pelt has a strength of four. He's got Claw. Claw effectively treats your opponent's strength, uh, opponent's armor value as seven. This is huge. If he can leverage Ice Pelts uh, effectively, uh, he can start removing doors that are uh, notoriously difficult to remove from the pitch. Ice Pelt has disturbing presence as well. That uh, will almost certainly not play a factor in tonight's game. Neither team uh, particularly known for being a passing team, uh, so a disturbing presence, uh, not a huge deal, but that uh, strength of six with Claw absolutely is. <laughs> Clive says, nor should love this. Blizzard seems exactly what they would be used to. <laughs> Maybe, maybe this is Nuffle's favor. <laughs> Who Polish says, I hope Kevin Bacon gets destroyed in this game. <laughs> I think we all do. <laughs> He's too big for his britches. <laughs> Three minute offensive line here for the Mighty Tidy Whities. You can see they have all that strength on the line. They're going to try to block down the line. Here's the kick. It's a blitz. The Darlings are going to get a turn zero move here. So Blitz means anybody who's not marked basically gets a free turn. So the three uh, defensive tackles, they're going to stay put. Everybody else has an opportunity to take some marks, and I have to imagine he will. Berserker Tempest says odd formation. Yeah, very, very uh, forward offense here by the Mighty Tidy Whiteys. Yeah, there's that mark on the line. This means the line uh, is not... But it's going to have to work really hard if they want to get blocked down the line. But uh, otherwise, uh, they're not going to get their blocks down the line now. And they're, <laughs> even worse, they're going to get tied up. Hey. 
s'mores dragon. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> yes, all these tie-ups, as we mentioned, the Storvin team, they want to take marks. Lots and lots and lots of guard. Very resilient players. Lots of block as well. Two die blitz on the offware near over in the left wide zone. He'll get a knockdown. Looking for a nine plus. Doesn't get it. Spoilers Dragon says the snow really makes it hard to see the players. Yeah, I, I think the Mighty Tiny Whiteys maybe just want to hide in the snow. <laughs> I, think, I think that's... How's that? That's really easy to see. Or this. No, I don't like that at all. <laughs> Two players back to protect the ball here in turn number one. Two die block on the line, gets the pal. This is with Ice Pal, this is a uh, ball block. He breaks armor, gets a stun. Two die block. Gets a knockdown. Has to follow up due to Frenzy. Frenzy says, if you get a push on your first block, you must follow up and take a second. Um, either way, even if you get a knockdown, you must always follow up. You do not have the option to stay put. Goes for the ball pickup with uh, Olaf. His pants are missing. The number nine thrower. Two die block on the line now against Soy Rogers. Gets the knockdown. Well done. The line was uh, was supported here by six more dwarves on the line. Three plus dodge by the number 10 lineman, uh, Gunderpants, over on the left side of the line. 39 seconds left in turn one for the Mighty Tidy Whiteys. Two players left marked. There's no way to make any of these safe. This, uh, there's guard as far as the eye can see. So if they mark any assisting players, they're still going to give their assist. B.1234, welcome to the stream. Yes, are you playing today? Am I playing today? I am not playing today. I'm playing tomorrow. Two die block. It's a push here against the Sunday Kid. One die frenzy follow up. Oh, it's not going to work out. Is he going to re roll this? I don't know if he does. Yeah. If he doesn't re roll it, it's going to be a turnover. Oh, he got stunned as well. Turn one now for the Dinner Bell Darlings. Two die block to kick things off over on the right side of the line. We'll get a push on Diaper Dan. Moves Butch Casserole, the number 11 Longbeard, down to mark the front right corner of this cage. Yeah, you can see the Dinner Bell Darlings are starting to pick players off. Paul Funyan moves into position to prevent Diaper Dan from trying to get back onto this cage. If he wants to get the free dodge, the positive dodge rather, he's going to have to move away from the cage first. <laughs> Clifford says, dang, it works correctly again. Hold on, I can, I can mess it up for you. Hold on.
There you go, Clypheus. <laughs> you can try it again. <laughs> you can get your nightmarish audio. <laughs> oh, it still works. Oh, no. Too high blitz. <laughs> Has to spend the reroll here. He's going to get the knockdown on the number two off Werner. <laughs> Breaks armor. <laughs> Gets a stun on under werewolf wolfman jack. Has a mark on the ball carrier now. That's a great stun for the dinner bell darlings. It must only happen on startup then. <laughs> There's a thing. There's a thing to do. It must only happen on startup. Dinnerbell Darlings picking off this offense very, very well. <laughs> so they got a bunch of players behind the rest of the offense and the ball. Have marked uh, everybody on this mighty tiny whitey roster. I, I don't know what they do other than pray to Nuffle <laughs> on this turn. <laughs> oh, oh, they haven't marked uh, Depends here, the number seven lineman. Fail the dodge. That's a five plus dodge. He can't. I mean, he'll have to reroll this. He decides not to. He's going to give up the ball here. <laughs> that must have been an error, right? <laughs> Turn two for the dinner bell, darlings. Uh oh. Oh boy. Circuit Tampa says that formation is what aided the dwarf, this dwarf scourge. Um, I, I would tend to agree. Uh, you really have to watch out for for the blitz. If you don't respect the blitz, then uh, very often you'll give up a touchdown. Ah, not so trusty patches says, yeah, I didn't see the dwarf there. <laughs> Smores Dragon says, I blame the snow. You can't blame the snow on a Norse team. This is this is their weather. <laughs> Two die block on the number six lineman here. He's deciding on a push or both standing result. He's gonna take the push. Follows up. Second mark on the ball carrier. That's the assist he needs. He does have guard. This is currently a two die block on the thrower. Two die block. It's a push or both down result. Is he going to spend his reroll? He does spend his reroll. He got the pal. We'll see where the ball scatters here. Dinner Bell Darling's down to one reroll for the half. Oh boy, that's not that's that's not where the mighty tidy whities want that ball to be. <laughs> we'll have a, a scrum for me here in uh, in uh, just a, a turn or so. Bacon went for the marked ball pickup. That's a fifth. That's a coin flip. He got the ball. <laughs> He's a strength of four. <laughs> Turn three for the mighty tiny whities. <laughs> Wait, I thought this was a dwarf team. This is a Skaven team. I didn't realize these were just rats in in dwarf in dwarf skin. I didn't realize that. Turn three for the Mighty Tidy Whities. They are, they are in trouble. Two die block in the right wide zone. They'll get a pal. They're hoping for something out of this. They don't get it. Two die block by the Yeti. Frenzy follow-up, gets the pal he's looking for, the big ragu. 
wants a 10. He got it. Sorry, he wants an 8. The Yeti does have Claw that treats the AV as if it were a 7. Two-player with Claws is really, really strong. Unfortunately, they both also have Frenzies. Another dodge that failed. That's a 3-plus dodge. It spends the reroll here. Gets a player in on the ball. Stand up, all foreigner blitz. One die blitz. It's a skull. That's not going to do it. Kevin Bacon says, sit back down. Turn three back to the dinner bell, darlings. They're in great shape here on defense. They can take out number six. And then they have a 50-50 uh, dodge away. Oh, sorry, no, that'd be a three plus dodge away. Hey. Two die block, it's a push against the thrower. This is gonna be a chain push. That's gonna get one player out of the way. There's a two die against number six. Here it comes. It's another push. We'll get another two die out of this. Here it is. Gets another push. So he's going to get a positive dodge away still. Tried to make it completely safe. Oh, is he not moving then? He just wants to get the other block. He might even take it as a blitz. Yeah, I'll take it as a blitz. Two die blitz will get the push. He will not follow up here. Oh, he did follow up. <laughs> He's he is not afraid. <laughs> He's got strength four. He says, I'm not afraid of you. Number 14, Soy Rogers will come back in to aid this uh, defensive touchdown attempt. General Custer will move up. He's exerting tackle zones here in the right wide zone. Doing a good job playing, playing defense. 35 seconds left in turn three for the Dinner Bell Darlings. They are, <laughs> believe it or not, all on defense here in the first half. There's Soy Rogers moving back to to help his uh, his ally, Kevin Bacon. Turn four now for the Mighty Tidy Whiteys. Now the uh, artificial bunny has to make the calculus here. Does he uh, try at all costs to recover this ball? Or does he just... Uh, concede the fact that he's going to give up a touchdown and, and not take uh, big risks with his fairly brittle team. Two die block on Queso Bill. Back at the line of scrimmage. Gets a push. Minute five left in turn four here. The Muddy Tidy Whiteys are looking for something, some opportunity, something to do to try to stop this score. They take the block over in the right wide zone against Sunday Kid. They're going to break armor. They got a stun out of it. It's a, an ineffectual stun. It doesn't really impact the drive much, uh, if at all. Flyface asks, what star player? Do the Mighty Teddy Whiteys have again? Ice Pelt Hammer Blow. He's got a strength of six. He's got uh, Claw, Disturbing Presence, Frenzy, Thick Skull. Um, I think that's it. Oh. 
Another block, another stun. Yeah, friend. Oh, he's got regen as well, which is pretty good. <laughs> Gets stun on the blitz, pulls in the assist to take the uphill block. Oh, boy! <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna keep the drive alive. <laughs> Spends the reroll and gets a push. <laughs> Is he gonna do it again? <laughs> He's gotta try something to get this ball back. He does. Two die uphill. Oh! Oh, he's going to knock down Kevin Bacon! Ah! Let's go! The ball scatters into the hands of free ball and Frank, the number six lineman. Takes the second uphill blitz, or uphill block, rather. This time it works out. Well done by the Mighty Tiny Whiteys. <laughs> we'll see if they can hold on to this ball. Final turn of the first quarter coming up. Turn four for the Dinner Bell Darlings. <laughs> two die block on the number two Ulf Werner. Gets double pals here. Sports Dragon says there was a free ball, so he free balled. <laughs> <laughs> Two die block gets the pal on number six. Where's the ball gonna scatter this time? Broke armor as well. This is gonna be a great stun. Into the hands of Gunter Pants. <laughs> Very, very difficult to recover the ball in a scrum like this. That was a five plus for Gunter Pants. Stand up blitz. He's going to get knocked down. <laughs> and he's going to have his armor broken. Another stun. Another great stun here for the Dinabell Darlings. Wow, the ball is all over the place. It's going to end up adjacent to Gawain Commando. Blue Pelly says, I'd punt that ball. It's got to get to it first, but it's, it's certainly not safe. Double skulls here has to re- Dump quad skulls for the Dinner Bell Darlings. They're out of re-rolls. Boy, what? What is this quarter? <laughs> wow. Turn five now for the Mighty Tidy Whiteys. Second quarter begins. Still a tough pickup, but that's a MA7 player that they can get the ball in the hands of. Good dodge. Boy, three plus dodge. Takes a mark on Kevin Bacon. If it's a dodge blitz with Gawain, that's a one die blitz. Fail the dodge. He's going to have to spend his final reroll here. Failed the dodge a second time. And that's going to be a turnover. Free pickup for uh, the Dinner Bell Darlings coming up. Honestly, at this point, I don't even think he wants to score with Kevin Bacon. Maybe he does. Maybe he wants to get Kevin Bacon to level five. This is a pretty good, pretty good opportunity to try to score with uh, General So or something. Get some SPP on someone else. Two die blitz. Gets a push on number nine. That's going to free up Kevin Bacon. Looks like he will try to score with Kevin Bacon.
One minute, 13 seconds left in the turn for the Dinnerbell Dinner Darlings. He's probably trying to figure out actually who he wants to pick this ball up with. It is going to be General S Oh no, it's not going to be General So. Moves General So forward. Ball pick up. Works out with Kevin Bacon. He'll probably stall here. Indeed he will. Kevin Bacon on the opposing 24-yard line now on turn five. Like it says, level five, that sounds like someone who'd be a great target to foul or maybe hit with a fireball. Fireball? Lightning bolt. <laughs> I, just, I just, you know what? I'm just going to lightning bolt you. <laughs> Dude, I block with the uh, Troll Slayer is going to be a Frenzy. Gets a push. He has to follow up. Another push here on the Frenzy uh, follow-up block. Turn six back to the mighty, tidy whiteys. It's all but certain that they're not going to score on this half. But can they conceivably stop the score by the Dinner Bell Darlings? Two die block back at the line by Ice Pelt. Gets a knockdown. Doesn't break armor. Two die block on Gravy Crockett's going to be a knockdown as well. He's looking for that nine. Nine or higher. Doesn't get it. Yeti Blitz on General Custer. who got the knockdown as AV is going to be treated to seven. Breaks armor, gets a stun. He was looking for more than a stun. Moving players back to the ball carrier. The offensive formation is just in absolute shambles. The mighty tiny whiteys do need a hero. Good dodge to Mark Kevin Bacon. Ah. Oh. What a fearless thrower. If he lives, give him a raise. Goes back to Penn's, the number seven lineman as well. Turn six. For the Dinner Bell Darlings. Troll Slayer's gonna stand up is two MA after the stand up. Costs three MA to stand up when you're prone. Two die block on that on that fearless thrower. It's gonna be a pal. Let's see if he lives. He will. <laughs> he will live in the end zone. <laughs> Bell Darlings are going to shift Kevin Bacon laterally to the left. They're going to try to stall out until turn eight. Two die block on the runner. This will be a knockdown. Eight plus breaks armor. Doesn't get it. We'll get a two die on free ball and Frank. First, he's going to take it on Gunter Pants. Gets a push. Yeah, doesn't have the two die anymore. That'll be the turn. You can see that uh, 
Doug Mintar is not standing up these doors here because he can't really capitalize on it. He says, if I stand up, I'm probably just going to take a blitz or uh, take a block. If I stand up the Sunday Kid and don't move him, <laughs> then he's going to get surfed. If I stand up Queso Bill, what's he going to do? Does make them susceptible to fouls, but when it's uh, roughly one v uh, eleven v eleven on the pitch, there is one player that's been re uh, removed. No, no, I'm sorry. There's not a player that's been removed. Um, oh no, there has been a removal. Guac Holiday has been removed. Regardless, <laughs> when uh, one player doesn't have a significant player advantage, uh, you, you've got to you got to think a little bit about whether you want to foul or not. <clears throat> I think for some teams and some team compositions. It's a it's an easier decision than uh, than for others. Good luck on this uphill uh, on this one die block rather. That won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> one die uphill blitz by the elf there number two both down results not going to work out because old kevin bacon he's got the block skill turn seven for the dinner bell darlings they might score this turn i don't think there's any need to but i also don't think there's any harm in doing so Going for, going for the surf on old Gunter Pants. Blitz surf. He is going to score. Well, not with that result. <laughs> I really... I really like how in Blood Bowl there are uprights for nothing other than <laughs> for for nothing other than uh, uh, sudden death tiebreakers. <laughs> All that infrastructure cost for a part of the game that really <laughs> really gets used. <laughs> Two die block on free ball, and Frank's gonna be a push. He'll follow up. Well, maybe he doesn't follow up. We'll see. Yeah, he'll keep uh, he'll keep General so free to to reposition if need be. Five seconds left in turn number seven. The dinner bell darlings trying to figure out how they can help ensure a touchdown. They're going to move the big red boo forward. Turn eight for the mighty tidy whiteys. Can they stop this TD? I imagine they stand up number two unless they're going to do the blitz with number two. Two die block on Soy Rogers is going to be a push. Follows up. Ha! Takes a mark on number 12. What's this mark doing? Looks like he's going to blitz number 12 here. Here's the two die blitz. He is going to get the knockdown. Does he follow up? He does follow up. 
I don't know, man. I might have kept him here, and then... Unless he has to kick out this way, he'd have a negative dodge. You know what? I think this is fine. I think this is good. Here comes Pants Squatch, the Yeti. They're coming to lend the assist on the two die block against Gravy Crockett Jr., the Troll Slayer. It'll be a push result. Some critical decisions here. 47 seconds. He takes the uphill block. Oh, no. <laughs> it's going to get knocked down. I absolutely would not have taken that block. I, I would have counted my blessings there. Life says that's actually better because the uh, prone player is eating up that space, you mean? Final turn of the first half here. Dinner Bell Darlings with no rerolls remaining. They've got some very careful decisions to make. I wouldn't be surprised if we see this clock almost run completely out on this turn. Darlings are finding almost all of their players marked. Without a reroll, it's very, very risky. He does have General So, he's an MA of five. You can reposition him. Forty seconds left in the half. Kevin Bacon, the runner, the ball carrier. He's currently marked by a, a lot. Oh no! first half what a, a a defense by the mighty tiny whiteys to stop the score general Dar darlings electing to take a one die block they got a skull out of it did not have a reroll and that was it and now the Dinner Bell Darlings are going to be on offense here in the second half of the game. It'll be 11 v 11 on the pitch. <laughs> Clavius, thank you for the bit. Thank you for the bits. <laughs> yeah, I, I respect stalling. Uh, it makes complete sense, right? Total sense, but. Uh, I'm very, very skittish. <laughs> I, uh, I will tend to score when I can, unless I, unless I'm like absolutely safe or like almost ab absolutely safe, which often works against me, right? It's often just, uh, uh, I was gonna say problematically, <laughs> probabilistically <laughs> better <laughs> to stall <laughs> in uh, in many cases. Mighty Tiny Whitey is setting up in an anchor defense. Five man offensive line for the Dinner Bell Darlings. Guard as far as the eye can see. <laughs> Boot polish said Kevin Bacon had too much hubris. <laughs> he's, he's feeling himself just a little too much. Like he says, go for the zero-zero draw. <laughs> I don't. Uh, I don't think so. I think both teams are uh, still in it to win it. Mr. Architepa says, stalling is team dependent. Stall on fast teams score as much as possible on slow teams. Um, I don't know. I, I would think all things being equal, it's maybe the opposite, in my opinion. The more uh, fast teams tend to be a little more brittle, and the more they stall, the more blocks they're generally taking.
Mighty Tidy Whitey's with the perfect defense. They get to reset their defense here. They're going to shift their line all the way to the left. And that'll be it. <laughs> Shallow kick. They didn't have a kicker. Turn nine for the Dinner Bell Darlings. They shift the player over to the left so they can try to block down this line. Two die block and they get the pal on the first block. Look at the two die block on the journeyman here. This will be a push. Wait, what's going on here? He's not a journeyman. Did he pick up a Merc? A Merc lineman? Looks like he picked up a Merc lineman with a uh, block. Two die block on the final lineman on the line. It's going to be both standard result. Here's the two die blitz on that uh, on that second lineman. It's another push. Oh, that's right. That's right. He's Norse. He's Norse. <laughs> Norse lineman come with block. Six dwarves on the line, setting up some ball protection here. And now he'll go for the, uh, he's got one more player to position, and then he'll go for the ball pickup. Fair enough, he'll keep Guac Holiday in the back, and uh, that may be the turn. Kept Guac Holiday in position just in case the uh, ball pickup failed. It didn't. He shifted Guac Holiday to the left. Turn nine now for the Mighty Tidy Whiteys. All you really have. Oh, I, I'm being very, very reductive here, so I shouldn't say that, but generally speaking, against a slow team like this. Um, the big defensive concern is just stopping forward movement of the cage. So if the Mighty Tidy Whiteys can keep their formation together and stay in front of that cage, they'll be in good shape uh, to at least stop the score. But if they want to win, they got to find a way to get this ball back. Two die. Yeti Blitz. Gets the knockdown on Queso Bill. His AV is treated as if it's seven. Didn't break armor. Pulls in the number two Ulf Werner. Has a mark on General Custer. General Custer, currently uh, the left tight end, we'll say. He's over in the left wide zone. Shifts Ice Pelt, the star player, back in front of the uh, offensive line. Two players left to action there on the line. Is he going to dodge him out or is he going to keep him there? Tries to dodge him out. Failed to dodge here with the journeyman. He won't spend the reroll. That'll be it. I might have been... Well, that's a tough call. That's a tough call whether to keep them there or not. Turn 10 for the Dinnerbell Darlings. Two die block on Gunter Pants. On the left side of the line. Gets a knockdown. Breaks armor. Gets an injury. Well done. One man player advantage now for the Dinnerbell Darlings. Two die block on the line. Double pals against number seven. Breaks armor a second time. Gets a stun.
all this guard means typically a strength five player is really, really strong. And I mean, they are by definition strong, but as you can see here, because of all this guard, it is so easy, especially when you want to be grouped up, it's so easy to get the assists you need to make a, a, a two die attempt against a high strength player. Ball's going to scoot up to the Darling Zone two yard line. Yeah, and there's a, there's that two die block we were talking about. Gets the push against Pants Watch, the Yeti. Debating whether he wants to follow up or not, he decides to do so. Shifting this gaggle of dwarves over to the left side of the pitch. It's uh, very nearly the entire team. There it is. <laughs> Did we say dwarves wanted to be grouped up? <laughs> it's her dead for the mighty whiteies. The mighty tidy whiteies. These glowing squares you can see here, uh, here, and here. This is disturbing presence. Not a factor in today's game, more than likely. Under a minute to go here. The Mighty Tigers Whitey's trying to figure out how to make their defense effective. There's so many marks here. It's just, it's really tough when you're fragile. Generally speaking, you look for a way to get a two-die block that you can chain into to multiple blocks. But, uh, man, <laughs> all this guard, uh, all this block, it's really tough to do. Takes the one die block, got the pal against Paul Funyon. Wow, he followed up. I'm very surprised by that follow up. Sweet Bunny says he's got to use that strength six to move some dwarves. I, uh, I would tend to agree. Here comes the blitz. Two die blitz. He's going to get the knockdown. Kevin Bacon must follow up due to Frenzy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, don't, don't, oh, oh, my goodness. Ha! <laughs> I was going to say, don't pick the ball up. It's a, it's a five plus pickup. But he got through the pickup. Failed the dodge, spent the reroll on the dodge. We'll see if he stays standing. The uh, the Yeti tried to block. Got knocked down. He KO'd himself. Good luck, Skidbark. <laughs> Good luck, buddy. <laughs> Uh, 
at the very least, the dinner bell darlings can move in and assist here, and then they can move in the troll slayer here to ensure that the first blocks of two die and the follow ups of two die. He does have Dauntless, he just needs the one assist. Well, looks like he's gonna do exactly that. There's the assist with the Sunday Kid. Oh wow, he's coming at it from the side here. He's gonna get the push. Spends a reroll, it's another push. This brings it down to a one die. Got the pow on the one die, it still worked out. Came at it, uh, in my opinion, from the wrong direction. I could have ensured both of those were two dice, but it worked out anyway. Knocks the ball out of the hands of Skidmark. Good knockdown back in this scrum. Knocks down the number eight lineman, that's the journeyman. Big disadvantage of dwarves is that they just don't have a lot of speed and the fast one here Kevin Bacon he's on the ground so his effective movement is three he could move five with two GFIs but remember we're in a blizzard this isn't really a blizzard like this is light snow <laughs> it is very lightly snowing it's not even laying <laughs> Dude, I block it's the pal and ice pelt. The star player. Basically taking ice pelt out of contention currently, taking him out of the drive. They can all change very quickly with that strength of six though. You pull, uh, pull just one player away and uh, things will change. See the dinner bell darlings trying desperately to have yeah, keep some control of the pitch here uh, for one turn. It's really all they need. Let's we'll see how the mighty Teddy Whitey's react to this. They have two re rolls left for the game. They're going to stand up Skidmark. That's the number four lineman who was formerly the ball carrier. Two die block back in the scrum against Wyatt Burp. They'll get a push. Smores Dragon says, I truly cannot tell how this is going to go. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> Ivy says, They got the ball somehow. They got it on a five plus pick. It might be on the replay. But... Yeah, five plus pick up to a three plus dodge. They got it. Two die block. Gets a push on the first roll. Double skulls on the second. Oh no! Quad skulls! Was going for the blocks first. And that's going to be a turnover. He's not going to be able to get somebody in position here to get at this ball. Turn 12 now for the Dinner Bell Darlings. They'll be able to, to shore it up, provided Skidmark politely gets out of the way. Two die block. Skidmark's gonna get pushed. Frenzy follow up. There's the knockdown. Well done. He'll have to follow up here with Grady Crockett. Breaks armor. Gets a KO. He did politely get out of the way. He said, you know what? The ball's now yours. Have fun. <laughs> Turn 12 still. The Dinner Bell Darlings will be able to, to get a cage on this ball. <laughs> I'll think about it. <laughs> 
General So is going to move down pitch. General Darlings are going to try to control a bit more of this pitch and uh, have players in position to, to be able to move this cage forward. Taking marks, as you do as a Dwarven coach. Two die block gets the knockdown on Gwen Commando. Two die block gets the knockdown on the off wearer number three as well. That'll leave just two Norsemen standing. Good stun there by the darlings. Goes for the ball pickup with uh, Soy Rogers. This, or I'm sorry, that was Kevin Bacon. Failed the pickup. That'll be a turnover. Turn 12. Final turn of the third quarter for the Mighty Tidy Whiteys. They find themselves at a three-player disadvantage on the pitch. Three players. Uh, I'm sorry, four players left standing. Two die block. We'll get the pal on Paul on uh, Paul Funyan, number twelve here. The long weird way out in the left wide zone. This is going to free up the number six lineman. He has an MA of six. He's going to move backwards to play some defense. Free ball and Frank moves back into the safety position. Stand up, Blitz, with Ice Pelt, gets a push. Ice Pelt has Frenzy, he'll have to follow up here. He'll get the knockdown on Butch Casserole. Breaks armor, gets an injury! Well done. Two-man player advantage now for the Dinnerbell Darlings. Two die block gets a pal here against General Custer. Clavius, <laughs> thank you for the pits. Turn 13 now for the Dinnerbell Darlings. Final quarter of play. This is a scoreless ball game so far. Neither player in possession of the ball. The Dinnerbell Darlings um, will attempt to pick it up on this turn. Two die blocks are both standing result against Soy Rogers. Or uh, against uh, Depends, the number seven lineman. Going for the ball pickup out of the gate. Works out. Kevin Bacon in possession of the ball. Probably moves up to the eight yard line. Indeed he does. Darlings trying to get some tackle zones between this Norse team and the ball carrier. Um, they've done it very well here. 
really only have to contend with the safety at this at the moment. And he's just <laughs> he's just picked off the safety. Walk Holiday will get uh, in front of the number six lineman here, he lends the assist for the Blitz. Two die Blitz gets the pal. Still has two points of movement left with General So. He moves General So over to the right. That'll be the turn. Turn 13 back to the Mighty Tidy Whiteys. Four turns to either recover this ball or stop the score. They did it in the first half. Can they do it in this half as well? <laughs> yes, <laughs> or kill dwarves. <laughs> Two die block on White Earp gets the knockdown, has to follow up. Freeze up the journeyman. Two die block gets a pal on Soy Rogers. Still has his blitz. Journeyman blitz. Oh boy. Two die blitz gets a push. Doesn't follow up. Interesting. Interesting positioning of that uh, of that journeyman. Two eye block in the left wide zone. Gets a knockdown with the all player in there. We get another two die block this time against General Custer. Gets the pal. This frees up Gawain Commando. Oh, broke armor. Gets an injury on General Custer. Wow. Oppo gets spent, and he just, you know what? He, he's not even out of med school yet. He's not even out of med school yet. Gotta get yourself a real apothecary. One man player advantage now for the Dinnerbell Darlings. He moved, or uh, Artificial Bunny moved Gawain Commando back here. Went for the dodge to move him to position. I'm, uh, which is, I, I didn't, I'm not sure why this blocker here didn't go here instead to open up the lane. Dinner bell darlings are gonna advance to the 16-ish uh, yard line. They'll have this ball. Pretty well secure. Indeed, the ball will advance to the 16 yard line over in the right wide zone. Two die blitz. This is going to be a knockdown on Gawain Commando. An 8 plus. Breaks armor, doesn't get it. <laughs> Turn 14 for the Mighty Tiny Whiteys. They have three turns left in this ball game. Sports Dragon says, come on, Stalligan, I dare you. <laughs> Two die block has to re-roll this. We're all double skulls to start with. We'll get the knockdown on White Burt here. But now you don't have a reroll left for the turn. If the mighty tidy whiteys don't do something on this turn, I have to imagine that the dinner bell darlings will score on 15. <laughs> the free journeyman. It's gonna somewhat get into position in front of uh, Kevin Bacon. He's not a threat right now. Here 
comes the blitz. Yeti blitz. Ice pelt gets the pal. Eight plus will break armor. Has to follow Frenzy. He'll take one more movement. There it is. He's now marking Kevin Bacon. That's a massive strength of six marking the ball carrier. Oh, well done. Well done. Life says he could just try to dodge out and score. He can, but uh, this is, uh, I think this is the best move he could have made. I think it was a good call. GFI, it's take a mark on the Troll Slayer. Remember, the Troll Slayer does not have guard. Turn 15 for the Dinner Bell Darlings. They do have a reroll. They've got a 3 plus dodge out to the sideline to score if they want to take it. Hey. Moving his free players first. This is what you want to do in Blood Bowl. Take your least risky actions first. seconds of passing the turn. Doug the Minotaur deciding how he wants to go about this. I told you, I'm skittish, man. I, I just go for that touchdown. <laughs> I know I have my reroll now. I know that the dodge isn't particularly safe. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> Run, indeed. Clive is thinking the bits. He's going to take the one die block first. It's both standing result. Oh, boy. Scary stuff. <laughs> Boot polish says, time to fail, Kevin. <laughs> oh, another one die! Ho, 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 Boy, oh, boy. It's a one die blitz currently on, uh, on Ice Pelt, but surely he wouldn't, right? He is going to do the one die blitz. He got the push. That's all he needed. Wow. Well, no, that doesn't because he's got an MA of six. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. He's got it. One to zero. The Dinnerbell Darlings are going to score. Boy, oh boy. What a series of rolls. to have a heart attack. <laughs> Dinnerbell Darling, sick the lead one to zero. It's gonna be very, very hard for the mighty tidy whiteys to come back from this. It's gonna have one turn unless there's a riot. Oh, there's still turn 15. We might lose a turn due to a riot. If there's a riot, there's a 50-50 chance we gain a turn and a 50-50 chance we lose a turn. Dinner Bell Darlings was set up in a, let's call it a 3-4 defense. Mighty Tidy Whiteys, whatever this offense is, it's going to be a prey to nuffle offense. Boot says, I have faith on one tie. All right, let's see it. I'm here for it. I mean, they have enough movement to score in two turns. Most teams do. Here's the kick. 
It's a blitz. That is not what the mighty tidy whities needed. They will see this. They will see this team engulfed, subsumed. <laughs> Here comes the Dwarven Tide. Circuit Temp says, I thought if it was turn 14, 15, or 16, you gain a turn. Anything else, you lose a turn. No, it's, um, I mean, maybe that was changed in the new rules. I'm not sure. But it's if it is turn 16 or 8, if it's the last turn of, of the half, it's a guaranteed gain a roll or gain a turn. And if it's before the first turn of the half, it's a guaranteed lose a turn. Otherwise, otherwise it's 50-50. Die Blitz in the left wide zone gets the pal against Quack Holiday. <laughs> yeah, so because because the Mighty Tidy Whiteys still had their tur turn 15 to take, it's uh, we're still in 50 50 range. Oh yeah, good call, sweet bunny. Yeah, there, so the GFIs are, are doubled in the blizzard, but it also means you can't do long passes or long bombs either. <laughs> Going for the ball pickup. All but impossible to score. I think he's got a GFI, right? One, two, one, two. That's as far as he can pass. He can go one, two, three, one, two, three. All right, the Mighty Tiny Whities are not going to score. This game's going to end 1 0. Dinnerbell Darlings are going to win this one. The range on passing orthogonally. The first three spaces are, are a quick pass. Then the next three are a short pass, and the next four is a long pass, and then the next three is a long bomb. Um, but remember, squares are, you know, we remember Pythagoras. Uh, the, uh, the hypotenuse of a right triangle is longer than the edges, right? So if you measure it diagonally, because it's, it's literal distance rather than spaces, diagonally it's going to be a little bit shorter. So if you measure it diagonally, you can uh, straight diagonally, you can just remove a space per distance. So instead of three, this would two would be your quick pass, two would be your long pass, um, uh, three more would be your, I'm sorry, uh, two would be your short, quick, man, I can't think, <laughs> quick pass, two more is your short, three is your long, and then two more would be your long bomb. The way I like to think about it, like I don't know all the ranges in between, but you know, that uh, my diagonal's my shortest, my orthogonal's my longest, and so if I go from a diagonal towards orthogonal, it's going to get just a, a hair longer as I go uh, around the circumference of this invisible circle. Two die block against the Yeti gets the knockdown. Just looking to take some blocks and beat up on some Norsemen here. 
Might as well foul in turn 16. Might keep a player safe in the process. Two die block due to Dauntless. Gets a push on Ice Pelt. Has to follow up here. Failed the Dauntless roll the second time. Oh no, I'm, he succeeded, but he's losing the assist. Still gets a push. He's gonna keep the drive alive. He's got four assists on a foul <laughs> against the Getty. He decides not to take it. I don't know if we've ever seen Doug the Minotaur take a foul. What a stand-up guy. Boo! <laughs> He's going to run Kevin Bacon to safety. <laughs> Failed the dodge with Guac Holiday. And got injured for his troubles. Oh, no, Guac. Uh, he's effectively safe. <laughs> Sweet Buddy says he uses star players for fouls all the time. All right, fair enough. Turn 16 for the Mighty Tiny Whiteys. Take some blocks. Maybe get a pass out of it. Maybe get a foul and call this a day. He doesn't have any rerolls remaining. To the Rail Darlings are going to win this one. One to zero. Did I block by Ice Pelts? He's gonna knock down Gravy Crockett, gets a stun, doesn't matter. One minute, nine seconds left in this ball game. The Mighty Tidy Whitey's just kind of figuring out what they want to do. Here comes the two die blitz. He's going to get the knockdown on Queso Bill. Gets a stun out of it. I imagine we'll see uh, a two assist foul on Queso Bill. They've got a three assist foul on Queso Bill. Oh, that'd be a four assist foul. He's got three assists already. And uh, the number two Ulf winner can come in for the fourth assist. Fair enough. <laughs> number two will do the fouling. Four assists. No fouls? Five assist foul? What's going on? There it is. There it is. <laughs> Elbow drop foul. Didn't get anything out of it. Let's see if he can pass this ball for some... For some SVP on the thrower. Some desperately needed star player points. It'll be a short pass unless he GFIs. And then it'll be a quick pass. Takes the one die block. Gets a both standing result. Ooh, boy. Hey, he got it. There it is. One SVP. Oh, the thrower, well done. One to zero, the final. The Dinnerbell Darlings are gonna win this one. Kevin Bacon, oh gosh. Oh no. Oh no, Kevin Bacon's the MVP. <laughs> Kevin Bacon, he'll be a level five runner starting next week. Gawain Commando, the runner for the Mighty Tiny Whiteys will be the MVP for uh, for that team. <laughs> Dinnerbell Darlings. Hell on to the spa for the majority of the game. SPP for tonight's Dinner Bell Darlings are going to pick up 10, while the Mighty Tidy Whiteys are also going to pick up 10. A good pickup for both teams. Oh, boy. <laughs> I tell you what, they, you know, uh, two two very good coaches here. Uh, Doug the Minotaur uh, showing, what, uh, showing how dwarves work, but uh, I think Artificial Bunny uh, really putting on the show with the Norse team as well. I You know, before the game started, I this was, if I was a betting man, all my money <laughs> <laughs> going on the Dinner Bell Darlings. And even though they won, uh, the Muddy Tidy Whiteys uh, had some uh, good positioning there in the first half to really force those those rolls on uh, on the Dwarven team and stop the score. Uh, all right, with that said, let's take a look at the schedule before we leave. Yeah, Kevin Bacon's now level five. 
Next up will be uh, tomorrow night. We have a double header tomorrow night starting at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Monday, April 24th, 7 p.m. EDT. That's uh, UTC minus uh, four. The, uh, the night's going to start with the Brewmeisters versus the Dead Presidents. Malik versus AV2, my team. That will be Chaos Dwarves versus Undead. And that will be followed up uh, immediately uh, around 9 o'clock by Donkey Teeth versus Double Dippers. That'll be Dead Fred versus Sweet Bunny. Wood Elves versus Necro. I'm looking forward to both those matches. Uh, after that, we have the Carnivores versus the Arendelle Icebreakers. That's Nick Satan versus Chime. Kislev versus another Norse team. That'll be Tuesday, April 25th at 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And then on Thursday, the week uh, will conclude with the Maza Homies versus the Damaged Dragons. That'll be a Lizard Mirror match. Amon Thodep versus War Horseman. That's uh, Thursday, April 27th at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And that's the schedule for week three. Once that uh, week is through, week four will begin. And when those games get scheduled, you'll be able to check out and get alerted to those schedules on our website at mammal.club. That's M A M L dot C L U B here on Twitch or on our social media pages on Twitter, Mastodon, and Facebook. You can listen to our podcast, Mammal Talk, and watch previous games on our YouTube channel. Play Blood Bowl. Where else can you watch Kevin Bacon retire as an actor and and start a, a Blood Bowl career? <laughs> a successful Blood Bowl career. <laughs> you can play Blood Bowl via Blood Bowl 2 and Blood Bowl 3 on Steam and in tabletop form at your friendly local game store. Until tomorrow night at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Take care, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your weekend.